My grandpa Dave, a naturally shy man, had no fear about speaking truth to power. He was passionate about the Colorado River and, his, and fought for decades to keep dams out of its canyons. He took his passion and his ninth grade arithmetic to the halls of Congress and, testifying before a House, a house committee, embarrassed the PhD engineers of the Bureau of Rec Reclamation. They had screwed up the numbers in their calculations justifying the dams in Dinosaur National Monument, and he won his battle. Che knows how to speak truth to power, and she knows the power of numbers in making the case for sustainable energy. Please join me in welcoming Freya to the stage. So as you compare me to David Brower, I'm not sure if I'm naturally shy, but I hope I live up to his other attributes. <laughs> um, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about my hometown, Kenai. It's located on the coast of the Cook Inlet, which is known for its powerful currents, one of the greatest tidal variations in the world. When you look across the water, you see the Alaska mountain range, where the volcanoes Mount Spur and Mount Redout stand out most distinctly. Three to five million salmon return here annually. My family started fishing in Cook Inlet in the 1960s when the boats were wooden and powered by oars. These days, we fish from aluminum skiffs with outboard motors. I have been fishing for as long as I can remember. On work days, I'm up at 5 a.m. watching the sun rise over the bluff and setting nets with my grandpa Eric. Sometimes we fish throughout the whole night and at 2 a.m., when I'm looking down at my fish by the light of a headlamp, I can also look up and see every star in the sky. The same salmon that have given such meaning to every summer in my life are at risk of harm from global climate change. Melting glaciers produce silt, which reduces the food available to baby salmon. Many people at home aren't aware of this or of other climate-related threats to salmon. They don't know the connection between the lucrative Alaskan oil and gas industry and global warming and the salmon industry. What they see when they hear about goals to stop global warming is a threat to their immediate livelihoods, not an opportunity to save the global systems on which we all depend. As the tide turns toward a more sustainable future, I think many people are anchored by fear that makes them resistant to change. Rather than forcing people, we need to include them in the change that we know is necessary. Make that change enticing and exciting. I don't know how to do that quite yet, still trying to figure that one out. But I do know that it will not happen without thoughtful communication and collaboration to make clear the connections that we all share. I believe that every small step that every person takes adds up to something greater. My work this past year introduced an incentive for Alaskans to start using alternative energies, but that alone won't change the norm of relying on fossil fuels. <laughs> My dream is to keep learning and Keep finding inspiration, whether that comes from the return of salmon each year or the beauty I see each day. Um, especially from incredible, incredible people like my fellow Brower Youth Awardees. So I'd really like to thank them and the rest of the Brower family, the Earth Island Institute, Ruth and Anisha for an amazing week. I'd like to thank everyone who helped me to take this small step of working with the legislature. And most of all, I'd like to thank my parents, Heidi and Dan, who are the most open-minded, encouraging, and loving people in my world.